Hey guys, JH, welcome to Practice Tea. And it's overcast and could rain, so we just don't know what's going to uh, take place, but we'll give it a go. Okay guys, today could be the most profound video that I've ever done in the 10 years that I've been doing videos on, um, on my channel, on YouTube. Because something has happened that for me is extraordinarily profound. <laughs> I've discovered something that I've struggled with my whole golfing life and always knew that there was a, an issue but could never identify it. And guys, it's in the grip. Now, I don't, you don't hear JH talk about the grip because I say they're individual, you could do whatever you like and I've seen a million of them and everybody has a different one to suit themselves. And it's all relative to the, the, the anatomical makeup of your hands and, and so forth. The, you know, the, the segment lengths, your palm length, your finger lengths, your, your wrap factor, all that type of thing. Mobility, all that sort of thing. And there why some grips work for some people and they don't work for other people. I've never been able to use an interlock. It feels like it's going to rip my little finger off. But guys, I've always used a conventional Varden grip, just across the roots of the fingers, very much in the fingers. I've always held it in the fingers. And my entire golfing life, and I got to the stage where I thought what I was experiencing, experiencing was natural. And that's what, what you were supposed to feel in the, in the grip and the way the club positioned itself in the golf swing. But clearly it's not. And why I say that is, guys, that I've never ever felt at the top of the swing the club ever being in the right position of set or cock or hinge. I, it's just never ever felt any good there, ever. And I've always struggled with it, but I thought, well, that's just, maybe everybody does. And I've always held the club in my fingers, and my grip has never ever felt really secure. I've got away with it, but it's never ever felt great, ever, in my whole life. And I know a little bit about anatomy. I've got a degree in biomechanics, or what they called when I got mine, kinesiology. So I understand how we work structurally, anatomically, and the way the articulation and, 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 and mobility of the joints and, and what have you should work. But I've put up with this for so long, maybe because I just didn't know the answer. Well guys, what it is, and having been around Mo Norman as much as I was, I should have got onto it earlier. Anyway, to cut to the chase. Guys, instead of holding it in the fingers as I used to hold it, in the fingers there, I now hold it in a fist grip. It's a fist grip in the, in, the, in the lead hand and a fist grip in the trail hand. And it's a split grip. Or what people call a, you know, a, a baseball grip. Or a lot of people call a ten finger grip. Well, I've never seen a ten finger grip, guys. I hate to be you know, technically correct, but you know, we don't have ten fingers. We have eight. Uh, but it's a split grip. It's Mo Norman in his latter part of his... Um, of his life. He never played with that when he was when he was playing at his best. But what he did, even when he had the Varden grip, he still held up the club in the palm, the palm of the hands. He used to talk about the meat of the hand being the, the strong part. And and guys I should know, in nineteen eighty six I spent a couple of days with Jack Nicholas, Tom Watson, Seb Ballesteros and um, um, Greg Norman at the Australian Golf Club and they were doing a skins uh, a match for Japanese television and there's a lot of interlude between shots and you know I got there some mornings and spoke and I remember talking to Jack about the grip and I said Jack Jack you know you've got small hands like me how do you hold it and he showed it to me and he, and he got the club and, and he said put your hand out and he stuck the club there like that right in the in, in the palm of the hand. And he said, there, close your hands. He said, that's how I hold it in my, my, in my lead hand. I said, why do you do that? He said, because you're going to back, backhand something, a wall or a person or anybody. And he said, you're going to backhand them with that. That's the meat. You don't backhand them with the fingers. You backhand them with that. That's where the power is. And he said, that's what I feel in my golf swing. He said, particularly having small hands and short fingers, I don't want to hold it in the fingers. And he told me that, but I just completely dismissed it. And even when Mo Norman showed it to me, I, I never ever 
went with that, and I never taught that when I, only people who wanted it when I taught Mo Norman. But just by accident, fiddling around here um, yesterday, by accident, I just, of course I've just not, just was annoying me that I couldn't get the feeling I wanted at the top of the swing. So what I did was I just got it in a fist grip. Freddie Couples talks about a fist grip in his left hand. And, I, and both hands, guys, I just grab it in the palm, palm there, like a fist. And I put them on, and I hang on pretty tight. Now, when I hang on like that, it feels like I've got no mobility in my wrists. feels like I will never, ever achieve any type of cock or hinge or, or relationship of planing here with the shaft on the forearm or whatever. It, doesn't, it feels, like, feels like that. But it doesn't give me that type of ball flight. The ball flight's off the scale. Now, in conjunction with, with channel lock, we talk about cherries on the cake, guys. This is a complete box of cherries just poured on here. This is the greatest cherry that I've ever had in my life. Now, you can do this in a normal swing as well. Now, what is it, guys? It's, it's that. It's there, guys. We hold it there. Right there. And it's a fist. We just make two fists and we put them on the club. Now, what it does in having the... Because Mo Norman pulled very hard with his lead hand. Jack Nicholas pulled hard with his lead hand. Sam Sneed did. Now the reason you can pull hard with that lead hand is that you can get all this pulling. Very hard to pull when you've got it in the fingers. Because there's a lot of isolation, anatomical isolation of musculature. And it really doesn't want to join up and be one cohesive unit to pull with. But I, I, I can assure you guys, as soon as I put it in that fist, wow, it wants to pull. It wants to pull like it. Now I haven't had a hit today. Now here it is. This is fist, and the grip is really, really tight. Now there, are, guys. That's the first hit of the day, and that is just blitz five iron, and that's just killed. And the feeling off the face is just fantastic. You just feel like you are backhanding someone. Bang like that, instead of that flippy flappy. Now I still get I still get the down release like that, and that's what I want to talk about as well today in the in this video. Because in conjunction with with the grip, and I think this can work for anyone, I've got a lot of mobility now in, in the grip. It's just extraordinary. It feels like I've got none. And I've got a very high pressure ratio. In terms of one to ten, I've probably got a seven or an eight in here. But I but I've still got still got the, the channel like I'm still going three lever. Look at that guys, look. That's just right on top of the other golf ball. I mean that's right on top of the other golf ball. And we're hitting it, we've had rain here for a week and the grass is just <laughs> six inches long. I'm, look, I'm down in it here, but it's not mowed anywhere guys. So it's um, got to make the best of it. So here it is. So it's a fist grip in both hands. Try and bend that arm there and I'm getting tremendous uh, setting of the club at the top, it feels beautiful here. It feels absolutely sensational at the top of the grip. Now I haven't had a hit guys, watch this. And when I saw Mo Norman hitting, I could always hear that unbelievable solid uh, um, solidness of the hit. And, and I know now it's because he was backhanding the club, uh, backhanding the shot here. Yeah, guys, first drive of the day. Wow! Oh my goodness! Oh. you just feel like it. You just feel like this is just backhanding the ball. I've never felt that. Now, in conjunction with that, guys, in conjunction with that, one of the one of the things that is, I think, the most incorrectly applied in any golf swing is the release of the golf club. And what is a release? It, it releases a lot of things to a lot of people. But really it is guys, all it is is, is getting rid of the, the cumulative um, effect of a backswing here with our angles. We've got those angles here, we bring them in and we throw those angles away. But how we throw those angles away is important. Guys, you can't come down and throw your angles away like this. Like that. You can't have that type of throw away. You need that type of throw away that. 
that lead arm has just got to turn. Now I know I go on about it, but at the end of the day, you'll never have any success in your golf swing unless you release the club that way. All the good players today have amazing amount of rotation through the ball. Incredible amount. You look at anybody from behind here on the tour, they're all here. The, the club's all here, guys. It's there. Even Mo Norman was there, post-impact. He was here. Because that's, that's, that's the way you get the feeling, and you can't have that going too early in the downswing. Once you've got to the top of the swing here, and you've started the downswing, guys, you can start that, that release as early as you like, providing a lower portion of the body has started the downswing. But you've got to get it going. You've got to get that happening in the golf swing. You can't have that. Even in channel lock, we've got the arms going out there, but the club face is releasing towards the target. And it's releasing towards the target as aggressively as it possibly can. Incredibly so. I'm trying to shut... I'm actually trying to feel, guys, from the top of the swing, that I'm shutting the face down over the ball. I'm trying to smother it. But because my lower half has started, I can't do that. If, if, I was, if I was dormant here, I could do that because that would be getting over it and it would be trapping it. It would be trap shutting it and smothering the ball. But because I've led with, with something in the lower body here, even though we're going into out here, the club can't, it can't over rotate before it gets to the golf ball. It just can't do that. So here we go, guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rotate it and I've got this, this two-handed this two palm grip. Look at that, guys. And look what I'm finishing. Oh, wow. Look what I'm finishing here. Look. This is where it is. That's how, what you want to cultivate, guys. Because the majority of you have got, have got this. You need to cultivate that. It's the most... That's an amazing drive, that. Oh, I can't believe. I'm so excited about the quality of impact I'm getting now. Even, you know, like... <laughs> I mean, I'm... I've been everywhere guys, there used to be a song here in Australia called I've Been Everywhere, but I've been everywhere in the search for the golf swing, and I've never found anything like this, for me, it's just extraordinary, but what you need to have, and whatever you guys have got, even if you don't adjust your grip, and there's really no reason to if you're hitting it okay, but I've never liked my grip, I've always hated it, and I never wanted to talk about my grip to people and I never wanted to talk about grip per se other than getting people to be as neutral as they could. If someone was you know, ridiculous strong or really crazy weak or both hands going a different direction I used to just get them lined up but I never spoke about you know how you should hold a golf club. But Mo told me even when he was at his peak he said yeah I had a Varden grip but I held it in the palms. So guys we've got a this release here. Look where that club's finishing there. The club's going into out and it's finishing here. We don't want it going into out here. Try and trap the ball over. Try and hit a couple where you actually smother it. Now if you do smother it into the ground, that means that your lower body hasn't moved. You watch this, if, if, I, if I actually do that and the lower body doesn't move, ball goes over here. Because I'm, I'm trapping it. I've, I've got that same amount of release going, but there's nothing to start the downswing. So guys, just practice this, here. We're going to take it up here, and just rotate it here as hard as you can. Just try it. You'll be amazed at, A, how much power you pick up, but how straight the shot goes. Wow. Okay, I do a quick when I'm on camera, guys, cause, and, and there's a bit of weather coming in, so I'm, I'm actually a bit hyper right now. But I'll slow it down. Here we are. We've got palm grip, and we're going to just trap this, trap release this here. Just like that. Look at this here, guys. Look where it's finishing. I'll hit a couple of shots this way and show you where the, where the club releases. Wow, they're good. But the good thing, guys, about this new grip is I can pull really hard with the lead hand can really pull hard. Look where that release is here, look. Club's here, guys, it's turned down. If you look at Lee Como, I've got pictures of, or some video of Lee Como 
coming into the ball. His club's here, guys. And he's a strong hitter. Okay, he does trap the ball. He hits the ball low. But he does trap it. But he's so strong with the shot because he does release it hard. So that's our release here. There it is. There. And you can pull. Pull like that, like, like the billio with... Um, Whip with the split grip. Look at that, guys. Wow. Wow. I'm so excited. At my age, I found Channel Lock a year ago and I found this grip in my 70, going into my 77th year. I found the grip. <laughs> oh, I never started playing when I was 34, so it's been over, you know, 44 years or something or 40, whatever. Um, and to find the grip at this late stage in life. And I pro guys, I found it by accident yesterday. As soon as I found it, I was just fiddling with the club. As soon as I got I thought, wow, I bet I hit that great, even before I hit the first shot, and I did. So it's fist, so we're gonna, we're gonna fist it, and we're gonna rotate it as hard as we can, and we're gonna stay back with our secondary tilt. Well, what a waste of 44 years or whatever it is, or 42 years of golfing life. Oh, if I'd have had that, if I'd have had that when I first started playing, you would never heard of Greg Norman. <laughs> uh, yeah, JH. But guys, I would have been able to play some golf because since I found this, just I just hit every shot perfect, and I mean perfect. I mean I've been hitting it great with Channel Lock, but these are perfect golf shots. And I've got and I've got some pull going. Look at that, guys! Wow! And I can just do it like a shelling peas, as we say here in Australia. Just like shelling peas. Now you won't be able to see the ball down range here, I wouldn't imagine. Look at that. At a three inch long rough, maybe four inch long rough. Wow. Look at that guys, right on top of the other ball. These are five irons out of the rough, they're not wedges. So I'm very excited. Okay, now while I'm on the, on the video here, um, just a quick thing on secondary tilt. Secondary tilt is that guys. How do you get it? You drive the head back outside the, the trail knee on the downswing. That, that's where it should be. Like that. That's where I want to be. Oh gee, that's a good shot. I can't believe this. I'm just, I'm almost just beside myself with the quality of ball striking I'm getting. I'm just, I'm beside myself guys. I just can't believe the quality of shot. It's madness. So here's we stay back. That's where I want to be in channel line. That secondary tilt, here. If you can get the head outside the trail knee, when you hit the ball, you've got secondary tilt. Now the thing is that, guys, that keeps you in your posture. Keeps you in your address posture. When you hit the ball, that's the whole idea of it. That's the whole idea of it. Oh, this is just unbelievably good, this grip. Oh, I feel like I can never miss the ball again. I can feel like I never hit a missed shot. I'll never miss a shot. And that's how my Norman must have felt. Oh, I've never hit it as good as this, and you've heard all that before. I never hit it as good as this when I was 34. Certainly never hit it with that flight just extraordinary absolutely off the scale extraordinary and we're hitting it out of three inch deep crabgrass here guys are you kidding me are you kidding me come on jage fist it here we go i'm getting a lot of a lot of arm extension out there
just fantastic. I'll pull really hard with the lead arm now. Wow. You couldn't go left if your life depended on it. You couldn't. Not with this golf swing. Just dead straight. Come on, Joe, bend that lead arm, three lever. Wow. Come on, one more. Oh, this is unbelievable. Okay, guys, it's early days, first day with it. But I just wanted to let you know. So it's, recap, it's fist. It's in the palm here. There. Same in the right hand. No overlap, just a split grip. Hands butted up to one another. Lee Como uses it. Mo Norman used it. Come on, Jay. Wow! Now, just came down. Okay, the battery might run out because I didn't charge it. I just thought I wouldn't get any videos in today. Last shot. Come on, James. Haven't hit any short shots or anything yet, guys. You're seeing it live here. See the secondary tilt here? Wow, I'm getting it so high. For so long. High and long. See, that's, that's going 9 iron height with a 5 iron. I'm just absolutely pumping it up in the air. Because I'm getting so much pull with that lead arm now, guys. Th that's the whole point. I'm getting pull with the lead arm. Not as much pull with that lead arm. I've got to work into that. Still dead straight. That's it. Now I can really work on, on, on activating my downswing with the pull of the lead arm. That's all I want to do. Just activate the downswing with a pull of the lead arm. Come on, last shot, Jase. There it is. Wow, oh, don't. That's never going to come down. That, that's hybrid distance with a five iron. That is where I normally... Oh, you won't believe me. I must sound like I'm, 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 I'm hallucinating. I just feel like I never hit the ball crooked again ever as long as I live. I'll never miss a shot. How do you make that statement? You'll never miss a shot. Well, you can make it all you like, but the reality is, will you? Well, I don't think I will. I don't think I will. Mo Norman said he would. Okay, I'll do one really slow. Really slow, because the battery's flashing. Come on, Chad. Okay, and, I, and what I'll do here, guys, I'll really release this down. I'll really fire the release here. Really release that hard. One more. Really, really been quick in the last half dozen shots. Okay, slow it down. There you go, guys. Wow. Okay, guys, there'll be more on this. Huge breakthrough. Huge breakthrough. And I want to refine what I'm talking about here because this is massive for me. Absolutely massive. And I want to, uh, I want to, I want to look at it. First, first time, I just wanted to do it today, even though it was going to rain. I had to get something. Uh, but it's just fantastic. And we'll talk about more of that release, guys. And some more secondary tilt and staying in the posture. Okay, I think the battery's flat.